I was very fortunate that my parents encouraged me to try lots of things, whether it was broccoli at age three or flying airplanes at age 18. They knew that trying things would help bring about a sense of self-confidence. And then when I was young and impressionable, I came across this quote from Eleanor Roosevelt, and it just spoke to me. And it took me a while to wrap my head around what it really meant. And it's not about adrenaline-filled, risky behavior. Do one thing every day that scares you it was about maybe exploring those things that tapped your interest. And what if you let yourself try something out? So what if that's a little scary? Well, then I saw this. Oh, I love this. <laughs> this really spoke to me. And so how I accidentally became a firefighter was that I decided I wanted to get my CPR certification. And I thought, well, the fire department will know where I can take class. So I wandered over to the fire department. And, and sure enough, they did. They have classes every month, and it was wonderful. But while I was talking to them, they started to say, oh, but you know about our volunteer EMT program for emergency medical technicians? And I thought, no, tell me more. <laughs> and then they started to tell me about their volunteer firefighter program. And I said, no way. <laughs> because, you know, firefighters are big, burly guys. And, and this, there was never anything in me that wanted to be a firefighter. But somebody else thought maybe I could be one. And so the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, I could maybe do that. And then I thought, I could do that. I could be a firefighter. And so sure enough, I, I went and they sent me to the academy and I became a firefighter. Holy cow. <laughs> and it was exciting and it was wonderful. And, and, and what did it bring me? Well, it brought me more than just facing my own fears. And more than just stretching beyond my comfort zone, what it brought me was this, this wonderful connection that I could make a difference in other people's lives. It made me feel not only confident, but you know, kind of powerful. I was in control. I was in control of my life. Wow, was that kind of a heady thought until things happened to prove to me otherwise. When my oldest daughter, Sarah, was six, she had a near-fatal asthma attack. And as I stood in the ER, shoulder to shoulder with the nurses and the doctors, preparing her to be airlifted to Children's Hospital, I had done that plenty of times before as an EMT, but never as a mom. No matter what I'd been trained to handle, no matter what I thought I could take care of, this was totally out of my control. This came down to a powerful moment as I stood there on the helipad and watched my daughter fly away, knowing that it might be the last time I saw her. And I had a moment of surrender, a moment where I had nothing to do but be in the moment and say yes to the moment that was in front of me, not just the moments ahead or the things that I wanted them to be or how I wished them to be. I had to surrender and be in the moment. And that was very powerful. Now, the, the ending's a happy one, because <laughs> here she is at 15, beautiful, smart, capable. She can't wait to be a firefighter and an EMT herself. Now, I was a firefighter for 12 years and, and had the, the great blessing of being a lieutenant, and, and it was wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm not firefighting now, but I am still an active EMT, and I still feel that it's as wonderful as anything I've ever done. But there are other things that I push myself to do, things that are even scarier, like <laughs> singing <laughs> and acting and standing up in a room full of people talking. <laughs> But the best thing, the best reward is, is knowing that I've passed this along to my daughters. It took me a lot longer to learn the power of yes, but it's embodied in my daughter's DNA. 
They, they know that it's there for them. They know that the magic is, is there and all they have to do is open up and say yes to it. Whether it's a young girl realizing her seemingly impossible dream of saving up her own money to buy her very own grand piano, or a young dancer on the stage at the Nutcracker dreaming of being Clara and maybe one day going to Juilliard. Well, they know all of this is within their reach. And I'll leave you with one last little story. When my daughters were both very young, came home with those red plastic fire helmets that they give out during fire safety week, and they're running around the house making fire engine noises, and one of my daughters grabs my helmet and says, Mommy, put on your helmet. We're a whole family of firefighters. <laughs> and I, thinking I was being funny, said, well, where's Daddy's helmet? And she looks at me with a shocked expression and says, oh, boys aren't firefighters. <laughs>